Hello everybody out there on YouTube. We are the Middle-Aged Guys, and we're going to be bullshitting about a game that everybody was looking forward to but got cancelled on January 9th, 2017. I am the Reverend. The theme here. Very Mouse One. The game in question that we're talking about is Scalebound, which was supposed to be a Microsoft Xbox One exclusive. Um, anybody who's uh, followed the particular game and it's... Uh, path through E3 and everything else. I believe it was originally announced out in uh, E3 2014, and then it was showcased again in E3 of 2015, and then wildly, to everybody's surprise, it didn't show up in E3 2016, which uh, kind of started hinting, cluing people off that maybe there was something was going on with the, the development of the game. Well, uh, according to like certain reports going back and forth, it kind of languished a little bit where um, development on it was kind of halted for a little bit um, and then what happened earlier this week on the 9th was that Microsoft themselves came out and said that they had officially cancelled or ended their partnership with Platinum Games the, uh, the folks developing it now that was pretty much a hard pill to swallow for a lot of Microsoft Xbox One owners and fans who were looking forward to the game uh, but what I think actually hurt a lot of people more was when Phil Spencer himself came out and he responded to it. Um, in his particular, in his words, um, his tweet uh, regarding um, the, the uh, what's that? The cancellation of scale bound. He was re responding to another tweet, tweet uh, from a, um, a tweeter called uh, TIC Podcast, who said, I'll be honest, at Xbox XP3, you know uh, TIC are big supporters of you and Xbox One, but this one hurt. Hope E3 is mind-blowing. Feel like the base uh, needs, needs it to be. Um, and then Phil Spencer uh, responded in kind to that, saying, uh, difficult decision. We believe the result is better for Xbox gamers. Still disappointing. I'm confident in, in 2017 lineup that's our focus um now we're going to talk about that lineup in a little bit but yeah a lot of xbox one fans uh who heard that uh the whole this is better for xbox gamers took it pretty fucking hard um before i languish and uh mon monopolize our time anymore what are your guys' thoughts on this you're the only xbox one owner in this bunch I want to worry how you feel about that. I was, I for one was looking forward to the scale bound. Like, like uh, the Reverend said, it was uh, uh, a neat concept that was shown out in 2014. And then 2015 came uh, E3 and uh, we got a little bit more, uh, I wouldn't call it gameplay, but we got a little bit more information about it. And then, like you said, it, it was MIA in 2016 um, E3, and it made a lot of a lot of the uh, Xbox One guys scratch their head. And uh, we started digging around a little bit, and then you'll there was a couple of uh, tweets between you know the developer you know out saying that the the uh, the, um, the, the uh, hardware it was tough to to create this game off of the current hardware. Um, but for Microsoft and Phil Spencer to, to say that I kind of, it's kind of, I kind of feel it was kind of like a nonchalant type of way of saying it. Like, yeah, it sucks that we lost this particular game. Um, but look what else we have going, you know, for, for the system in 2017 which we got Halo Wars 2 and, you know, several other games, Cuphead. Um, but it really did hurt the lineup for uh, 2017. And I have to echo what that, that, that Twitter guy said, you know, that E3 better blow us out of water. It better, it better be mind-blowing, whether almost to a point to where Half-Life 3 is announced and that type of mind-blowing. I mean, because Crackdown 3 can only take you for so long, you know, and, and State of Decay 2 can only take you so far. It, Scalebound was one of those unique games that, that 
we haven't played before that, that you know, it kind of, it, it's just taken away just like that. And it, it's a real shame. And I feel that, you know, it seems like that Microsoft has been, you know, facing an uphill ever since release. And this, as somebody who owns the system, I really don't feel that, that a reason to own the system now. I mean, because the whole focus that Microsoft has right now is, you know, that they're combining their PC with their console it's as one Microsoft formula. And, you know, then you got, then you look around, let's look around the, 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 the area here. We got PlayStation 4 that has exclusive after exclusive after exclusives. Then you got, now we got the Nintendo Switch with, you know, all these exclusives, you know, and then, and then you're looking at, then you look back at the Microsoft, and you're like, where are the games at? And, and nobody should ever have, to, should ever say that. And it, I mean, it's almost a point where I should turn in my Xbox One, you know, to find, a, to get a better system or a more retro system. It just, you're not encouraging me to keep my Xbox One. You're not encouraging me, or you're not encouraging people in this room that don't have Xbox Ones to buy them. There's nothing there, if you really think about it. And I've been just rambling on. Uh, go ahead, Dean. Um, that's why I gave you the floor first, because you're the only Xbox One owner of the middle aged guys. Yeah. Now, I think look, this is a very big disappointment because, you know, when you get, especially nowadays, when you get a video game console, you kind of look forward to its first party support because that's the real ammunition that you need as far as owning the console. Yeah, it's the meat and potatoes of the console. Because, okay. Because without first party, I mean, every console would have the same, same amount, amount of, yeah. the, 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 the exact same games. And it's like, okay, what would the difference would it be? Why oh, well, this back, these graphics are a little bit tweaked up over here than over here. and But but this one has a little bit better sound with the sound bar than this. Uh, no, look. <sighs> with the announcement of the Nintendo Switch and what they did with their with their conference, what, what they did with, with everything and what they announced and everything, they did in one conference more than Microsoft has done in the last couple of years. And this is Nintendo we're talking about here. That's my opinion because of what they showed and what they presented and what they're about to do and even bringing back third party support, I hope. Well, one, one argument that maybe somebody out there might have as well it said, you know, I did say, why was the point in having an Xbox One? You, they are to Microsoft's, um, I guess, credit, is that they are making a lot of backwards compatible games from the Xbox 360 available for, for the Xbox One. And quite frankly, I think that's the best thing that they've done. But if you're if you're counseling or delaying your 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 future games, your future franchises, because I mean, I really thought that Scalebound could be a potential franchise. Mm -hmm. It was that interest. It was that unique, that interesting, and I and I felt the the uh, the you know the companionship between the dragon and and the rider or whatever it was, you know, and it just it just blows my mind. Maybe you know certain things turned sour, you know, in the development process. One thing I will say, I will go Don Matrix on all of you. There's already a system out there that plays 360 games. It's called a 360. And I own a 360. You know, if I'm going to play 360 games, I would rather play them on the freaking 360. Now, I do understand that having the option to put your 360 games in your Xbox One and to have them run and to have them play and have the extra features that is great. That's fine. That's dandy. That's dandy. Outstanding. Fantastic. But you got to understand that it has to have, Xbox One has to have its own exclusives in order to carry its weight. I don't understand why you would get rid of anything that's first party. 
period. That for me, it, it like I say, it's very. Dis- what if Sony? What if Sony cancels their God of War? Could you imagine the Sony fanboy backlash? I got one even better. What about Zero Dawn? Oh, Horizon. Yeah. Yeah, and and there was so much that was shown. Yeah. Already, and yeah. then they say, you know, oh, we're pulling the plug because. You and, know, and that's what it felt like. I mean, it, it's really it really feels that like you're as a. Xbox One owner, it feels like you've been punched in the or stomach. Or what if they would have done that to The Last Guardian? I mean, I, and, and the thing is, though, is that it seems like they were trying to save face, per se, by saying that, you know, maybe it was better that it was canceled. You know, you got all these other guys that are that are uh, coming forward and said, maybe the game sucked. Maybe it is for the best interest of Microsoft that, that this got canceled. So, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a shitty game released that, that just flops? Or would you rather have a canceled game and you never know? I, I will. Okay. For the folks who are sitting there that are saying that um, maybe it's better. It didn't come out because it was rumors are that it was shitty in development. I'm going to call you out to the floor right fucking now, because <laughs> here's the, here's the truth of the matter. All right. Uh, we will leave a link to the confirmed exclusives for the Xbox One in the description of this video, all right? When the physical releases confirmed for 2017 can be counted on one fucking hand, all right? And I go ahead and I look at the Switch of all places. <laughs> I have to sit there and bust out my toes and unzip my pants in order to go ahead and count the, count the fucking releases. I'm going to tell you right now, that hey, look, this whole better off without you. You you don't have a lot of family members to count on here, Ooh. right? <laughs> I, I'm just gonna say that right now. <laughs> um, here's the thing: the the backstory with Scalebound is Hideki Kamiya, the the founder of Platinum Games, who's a former Capcom employee. He's the guy who who created the Devil May Cry series. All right, mm-hmm. he uh, was one of the founders of uh, Clover Studios who created Beautiful Joe and Okami and other the other great Capcom franchises from the PS2 that people couldn't get experiences that are comparable anyplace Anywhere else. else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, he, Scalebound has been his, his love project. It's something that he has been working on or working toward for over a decade. All right? So it... It, it was in development or something that he wanted to go ahead and put together even before Microsoft saddled up to it and said that they were, they were willing to go ahead and provide him funding to go ahead and publish it out. Um, the, the thing with the thing with the, the exclusive games, uh, you know, and, and uh, Gray Mouse was, was talking about this right now. He was, he was pointing it out, you know, the, and we mentioned this in, in the, in the Nintendo switch video, uh, you know, Without those exclusive games, without those reasons for me to go ahead and own this particular console, guess what? All I got in front of me is expensive fucking paperweight. Think about this. What if the Nintendo Switch didn't have Breath of the Wild on it? Or any of the anything. But, you know, it it really isn't, it really doesn't. Oh, just Breath of the Wild alone, because I would seriously hurt. (laughs) Because Breath of the Wild was announced. And what if the Switch came out and was like, well, you know, we're not going to put it here. And, and it, 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 could you imagine a backlash? Yeah. I mean, I, look, I'm not even a well, big Zelda fan, but I would be pissed if that would have happened. Well, one interesting thing that I'm not trying to give false hope to anybody, but like what the Reverend just said, has mentioned that he's been working on this for a decade so it wouldn't surprise me if it ended up somewhere else if it ended up as a fund me go fund me uh, or not a, or a uh not a, a kickstarter how about a kickstarter a kickstarter mm. and, and it, it will it really depends on how much you know platinum games owns the ib i i and that's that's one of the that's, things that's, that's the hiccup well, that's that's one of the things that a lot of people have been uh, speculating on. And the thing is, is that um, Microsoft has been rapidly taking down any sort of scale bound media on their marketing websites, the YouTube channel, and everything else. Yeah. Which tells me 
that if they can't host the media, they can't make revenue off that media, that they probably don't own the IP. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that Platinum Games still has rights over over the, the IP as far as scale bound goes. Mm-hmm. Now, whether or not it shows up someplace else, um, you know, whether it be PS4 or Switch or, or, or someplace else, um, you know, is, is completely up in the air. That um, would be ridiculous. That would be if I see Scalebound at E3 on Nintendo Switch or on a PS4, I will rant about that, even though I'm a PS4 owner. Because it, it's just a simple fact of the matter that I look, competition makes this industry thrive, and I want each and every console to have their exclusives and do well. I, I, that's what I really, really fucking want. Regardless of what console it is, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I want everybody out there to have, yes, everyone's going to have their preferences, and I want everybody to have their gaming experiences. You know, I, I can understand that fanboy garbage. I hate that, but I, I really feel that every console should have their exclusives. Well, they need their exclusive to set them apart from the others. I yeah. You know, I mean, we we've used that example before. Like, um, you know, PlayStation, you can only play this game here. Nintendo, you can only play this here. Xbox, you can only play this here. You know, and that w- without having competition, you the companies get complacent. It's not. It's not that. Yeah. It's not that this time it's going to PC and Xbox One. They canceled it all together. Yeah. That's what really, really kills. I my my hope is is that if they find a different publisher, you know, somebody to go ahead and and hand them funds to finish developing it. Computer entertainment, uh, or, or Nintendo, or or somebody else entirely. If, if they dog. sit there, if they sit there and they they we see this end up on Steam, because if they were if it was going to end up on like the um under the Play Anywhere market scheme where it's going to be on the Windows 10 fucking marketplace and shit like that. It's already going to PC. Um, Valid point. Valid yeah, I would, right. I would love to see it come out. Is it going to happen? Nobody knows. And right now, the folks at Platinum Games are pretty much, they're, they're radio silent on it. They're probably hedging their bets and they're probably going out of their way. Or maybe there's some sort of legal obligation where they can't talk about it just yet. Um, so hopefully something like something like that will come up. But like I said earlier in the video, the the problem that we're running into with the with the Xbox uh, One, um, and I'm I'm not speaking facetiously here, um, is that the the number of exclusive titles that they have in their lineup is extremely low. It's completely anemic. Um, That's the sad part. You're, we're not yeah. even being facetious about this. Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not joking around. I, I, you know, I, I, I'm all over jumping on the the Xbox negative three fifty nine fucking line because guess what? I haven't heard that anyplace else, and that's my fucking line. When I go ahead and I, I, I talk about it, especially when I, I'm poking fun at the console. But the truth of the matter is, when I said earlier in this video that when you look at the physical releases that are confirmed for this year. As far as retail releases, there's only the five of them. Literally five. How many does the Nintendo Switch have at this point? At this particular point, if I'm looking at the Nintendo Switch for exclusive releases, uh, you know, at retail, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen of them. And that's for 2017 alone. Uh, well, it's at least. At least confirmed. Not all of those are for 2017. Okay, okay, guess confirmed. what? They're they're confirmed exclusive exclusive titles for a platform that hasn't hey, even hey, now, wait been released. Hey, now wait a minute. You mean to tell me that okay, even the Xbox One confirmed may not even be this year? Um. Yeah. 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 They may be. They may be delayed. Come on. I mean. <sighs> Damn, man. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you know, Phil Spencer did say a year ago that they're more focused on third party. Why? Well, no, I mean, the third party. The, you can the, have third party. And we will enjoy third party. 
but there has to be wet specific weapons for your console first party. Well, see, the thing is, though, I think they milked the Halo cow for so long. Halo's not even a weapon anymore. Maybe Halo Wars what about is. Gears? Halo what Wars about, 2. What about Gears? Gears is also in that same situation. They gave up Fable. And Fable's gone. Scalebound's gone. They gave up Project Gotham. Project Gotham gone. You know, uh, Crackdown, I mean... Yeah, Crackdown, Crackdown 3 is set to come out, but that's yeah, Crackdown like... Street, Crackdown 3 is still coming. Uh, but it's the fact that, okay... You know, Crimson Skies, you know, Fusion Frenzy, Blood Wake. I've even uh, Kung Fu Chaos. I've said all those Microsoft titles before. Mech Assault. I mean, yeah. all of these things can just be there. Yeah. You know, as weapons, as ammunition. You know, even the funniest part about it is the Nintendo Switch has third party that's going to be exclusive to it. Yeah. Crazy. You know, I think. Unfortunately, where we're, we're sitting at, and we're, believe me, folks, we're not trying to harp on Microsoft, but just looking at this at this from a, an objective point of view, I'm almost getting the impression that uh, Microsoft has been tied up into like trying to uh, change their place in the market where it reflects more more something that um, that matches up to what's being offered through like mobile devices and like trying to sit there and front end services through Xbox Live than they have actual games. It's fucked up when portables have more exclusives on it than consoles. Well, you know, I, I think I've said it before in a couple of videos that I felt that the direction that Xbox was going um, was in the wrong direction by using the PC I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to bring in the PC people into their Xbox One, but that's not working. They, they should have never. They should have never had. I mean, how many E3s have we all sat through and heard that stupid saying that Xbox console exclusive, PC oh, and exclusive, Windows, Windows Ten, and Windows Ten. How many? How many times have we? How many times have we hear? We heard that all. Everything they announced last. year, last year and no and no it's not the same as the ps4 and vita no and no it's yeah. not that's not the and, same and i think that direction that focus does the vita has have more exclusives than the xbox one i believe it does uh, it's way over the vita has there's so many i thought that was a legacy system well um, half of the you know if you're if you're counting all the imports it it completely eclipses it yeah, uh, you know, as oh, imports for, for Xbox One. Oh, yeah, okay. No, That's, I mean, I, I literally talk about yeah. the no, no, but I, I yeah. know that that was my point leading up to that. It's like, fuck, you're not gonna have that. So, <laughs> I mean, well, guys, you know, if if you watch this video at this particular point, at this, you know, this long, please let us know in the comments below, you know, what you think of. You know, Scalebound being canceled. You know, I love to read it. And what's your impression of the Xbox One in general? You know, one question I would like to ask anybody that's an Xbox One owner and or if you're going to get a Scorpio. Let, let's assume that this they, 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 they keep going by this track. Let's assume that 2017's E3 for Microsoft does not deliver as far as for, uh, first party titles. <laughs> Are you still going to be interested in a Scorpio? Let me, uh, as an Xbox One owner, no. Um, the only thing that would bring me to buy an Xbox Scorpio would be if they come up with new, fresh franchises at E3, unless they reveal, you know, new IPs, new new stuff because i mean i really have no desire like i said at the beginning you know and and it hurts me to say this you know that i have no desire to continue to buy games for the xbox one nothing really inter i mean yeah i want to play crackdown 3 i'll probably play that and i'll probably play the halo 2 uh halo wars, halo wars 2 and i would and i definitely want to play cuphead you know but is it cuphead an indie game 
That's what I was going to Two out of those three I just mentioned are going on PC. Yeah. So and we I mean, went to a really nice PC just a few months ago, too. And that's what I'm saying. I, <laughs> I'm just going to get a Steam account and be done with it. I mean, Microsoft, I don't know what you're doing. I don't understand what you're doing. You're really shooting yourself in the foot with this. And you, <laughs> what about the HoloLens? That's that's not even being uh, marketed out to the general public. That's only being marketed out to, like, industry engineers. But that was the, we have that, not but heard that, anything but, but that about was, that since... E3 2015. No, 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 no. I think E3... 14, I think it was. Yeah, it's been a while. It's we've been, no, no, it's been about two years. They demonstrated it on E3 2015 with um, yeah. Minecraft. 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 Yeah, yeah but, but it's it's out there, but the, but the people same. who, you know, yeah, the only people who use it are like it. See, even Microsoft, they, they bought Minecraft. Yeah. Or Mojang. What is well, it? The, the thing about it is that they're willing to go ahead and license the game out and spend and, money for them without. <laughs> Without Again, much mind blow. Why it's being licensed out to the, the, the Nintendo Switch? Well, now wait a minute. <laughs> well, the, Minecraft is are is already on the PS4, and even no, the Wii. I understand that. But, but why are you going to lend it out to a brand new system? Okay, okay look. My, the point is this, and and I'm just going to harp on this. You know, the reason why Nintendo is, you know, in the running or surviving or living or prospering or anything like that is because of their first party. Okay. They have enough weapons of their first party and they are going to ex expand on their first party as far as creating new experiences for their first party. You know, you know um, Sony, yeah, they don't have big weapons as far as their first party, but. They at least have exclusives that they can build upon if the if those exclusives do well. That's what Microsoft Xbox brand needs at this point. They need to just take a chance, take a shot. Just have games that you can only play on that console, period. That you can't get the experience from it anywhere else and have a whole library of that. That's not their focus. Their focus is to have games on the, is play everywhere. That's, that, that is your focus. I mean, look, even the CEO well, can, of Microsoft. Well, they can play it everywhere, but just on their console. No, no CEO. Switches, of play, switches play everywhere. The on CEO console. of Microsoft, you know, there was an article maybe about a year ago saying that was their focus. They're trying to narrow the, the console and the PC. They're trying to, that's their vision. And as long as they have that, 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 that vision, they're going to continue to, to be lackluster. And, and that is bullshit, you know? And the thing is, though, what would happen if the Switch takes over for, for a Microsoft, and actually Microsoft is number three now? It won't happen. I'm going to say that right now. It won't happen, at least not for the next few years. Okay, so then I don't have to worry about that. But I will offer up this, that in regards to what... The Switch is sold out. You know, in regards... Yeah, but every Nintendo fucking console before launch is sold out. All right, so I'm not... Yeah, you know, that happened with the Nintendo 64. They still ended up third. So I'm, I'm not taking that as... As a as Bible, you know, scripture or anything. Well, the thing right. is, though, the problem with that is this: is that Microsoft's been hiding their numbers for the last four years, or last three years, rather. I, I think, yeah, but the one thing that they can't hide is, you know, raw sales numbers that retailers go ahead and put out. The one one of the things about what I think Microsoft can do, all right, is that yes, they can still go ahead and insist on following this play anywhere thing. And integrating, you know, uh, the, a crossover between Windows 10 and Xbox Live and everything else. Because uh, guess what? That's just on a software and infrastructure level. That really doesn't change, like, um, uh, release strategies or anything like that. Um, what they can do, and this is part of what, what Theme said, they can do what Sony did when they first put out the fucking PlayStation find developers out there who have good ideas who are starving for exposure on a major platform. Yeah. Okay. I mean, 
if if Sony never did that uh, core uh, Crystal Dynamics, uh, a lot of the a lot of the folks uh, Insomniac Games, Naughty Dog, they would not be the big players that they are now. If Microsoft can still go ahead and do their crossover bullshit with the, with the Play Anywhere stuff, but if they went out of their way to go ahead and nab projects from creative development teams and said, hey, look, we're going to give you a big opportunity to make the game that you want. You want. It's going to be on the, on, on the Xbox One. Then they can go ahead and give people a reason to buy their shit again, a reason to keep their shit around, all right? Because, you know, I, I don't want it to sound like we're harping on this unneedlessly, but if you, if you haven't paid attention to the last 15 minutes in this video, we haven't been smiling when we haven't been joking around, all right? Um, the whole thing with, with Microsoft, if they succeed, that's great for gaming, all right? Yes. If any other platform or first-party publisher goes out of their way and they do good, a rising tide rises, you know, influences, raises all boats. That's what we're looking at here. And Microsoft, as harsh as the consumer reception has been ever since 2013 for them, okay, there has been moments in time over the last few years that they've shown pockets of brilliance where they're like, okay, we can get this on track. We can fix this. All right. But guess what? When anybody, anybody, it doesn't matter if they're a hardcore, a hardcore fan who owns your system, who goes out of your way and looks forward to every brand new release or anything like that. If they look at your lineup lineup and they see that your exclusive lineup, like I said, can be counted on one fucking hand. All right. And that if you have, any of the other platforms out there that you can get any other other major game that's being released, you're not giving them a, a big you know reason to go ahead and keep a hold of your platform. And that's just the truth of the matter. They can fix this. All right. It's not like Microsoft doesn't have enough money to fix this. They Please. can fix this. They just have to change their direction just a little bit, do a few things differently, and stop fucking people by sitting there and attaching shit through your, through fucking paywalls and shit like that, you know, and come out with some good fucking games. Or at least exclusives. I mean, damn. Ratchet and Clank is a Sony exclusive. It doesn't yeah. do all that well, but it's something that you can only get on Sony. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not a stellar thing. It's not like, it's not like the Uncharted games, but it's a solid game that you can only get there, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's still it's solid. solid. Well, yeah. you know, The Last Guardian is another one. Yeah, you know, I mean, reception on that has been generally, even the positive reception has 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 had critical things to say about the Last Guardian. You know, the, that's just the, the the critics being honest. You know, but again, you can't play it anywhere else. Yeah, you can't play it anywhere else. So people are going to go go to that platform, yeah. you know. And the the thing too is, you know, there will always be multi plats, you know, games, third party games. And right now, it seems like you know Microsoft has the has the uh, low end of the graphics. You know, people are looking for. I mean, because now PlayStation Four is the is the system to have those multi plats on because it just runs better, it looks better. But that's that's okay, your like that, that's that your yeah they actually some of them run 60 frames per second and others run well, 30 on the xbox one yeah. but that's all perspective you know i mean so it just if microsoft will change direction like you said a little bit and start focusing on capturing you know whether you have to create your own new ip i think i find that more refreshing is to you know, it's nice to see old IPs get the next sequel or the next numbered game. That's fine. But where my interest lies, and it always has lied, is in the new, these new, fresh IPs that nobody's seen before. I mean, look at like for Cuphead. Cuphead. Yeah. I was ecstatic. That is a unique game. Because as a someone that doesn't own an Xbox One, I was like, now that is... That's something that you could get behind. I was like, yeah. okay. Now, now do this and, and create some more good shit, and then I will be interested in your console. You know, that, 
and I would actually buy it and I would actually play it and I'd be like, yeah, I own that shit. And wait, do I recommend it? Yes, and here's why. I'm not seeing that as of right now. Yeah. I mean, like I said, if you could count, you know, on on your what we have four we have what Cuphead we have uh, Wars two Crackdown three. Crackdown three State of Decay and Phantom Dust Phantom oh I forgot yeah. that's actually yeah, excuse me. Yeah. yeah Crackdown Halo Wars two Phantom Dust Sea of Thieves and, and State of Decay oh and Sea of Thieves Sea of Thieves yeah. I forgot about that I, I guess because I'm not really interested in but that you, style see, of see, games that's, see, that's the thing. but that's fine though some people are yeah but like. Uh, Phantom Dust, that's more of my style. Cuphead's more of my style. I, you know, I'm yeah. really starting to get tired. Crackdown's more of my style, too. But Halo 2, I'm tired of the Halo series. I'm tired of the Gears of Wars. It, it, it's time to to move on and, 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 make, and make another IP. But Microsoft is not doing that. I, I mean, it, it's so... Take a pit, take a, a page out of Sony's book. Look at all the the things that they put out and will put out this year. And your list is only five. Yeah. I, of course, you know this is foresight because we don't know E three this year. I mean, like I said, now 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 the expectations are now. It, it, it's like this: Microsoft has got to knock it out of the park at E three this year because. The last two E3s, they've been behind Sony. Well, if they fall behind Nintendo at this year's E3, then they're going to have a lot of issues. Well, 2016 um, E3 wasn't so bad. But it wasn't so bad, but the, the problem with, with the 2016 E3 is that, you know, one of the things that a lot of people were waiting for, I guess what, it's no longer showing up. It's, it's, it's now a fucking vapor dream, you know, and, and that's... That's exactly what I was going to mention, too. I was going to say, I'm sitting here strugg- I'm struggling to remember 2000, Microsoft's 2013 conference. Yeah. I, I, I am literally sitting here trying to remember what they announced. Yeah, I, and, you know, the, I, I think what's up is that, you know, like I said, you know, like I said uh, a few minutes earlier in this particular video, folks, if you're watching this up to this point, we're not harping on Microsoft because we just want to go ahead and take jabs at them and kick them while they're down. Because guess what? They are number two in the, in the industry, which still makes them a lot of money. All right. We would like them to do better. And generally speaking, just seeing what other companies have done over shit ever since the, you know, the 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 early the late seventies and early eighties, you know, there are things that Microsoft can do that doesn't involve like huge ground baking groundbreaking changes that they can do to go ahead and improve their their um uh their outlook. You know, like I said, if they went out of their way and just, you know, looked at developers and, and sat there and, and and you know made it easy for developers and publishers to get on board with them. Just like multiple other multiple other competitors have done, you know, years, decades beforehand, you know, it could really help them in the long run. But where we're at right now, it's you know, trying to dip into the, the Microsoft pool or the Xbox pool to sit there and, and see how deep that experience is. Unfortunately, the folks who are stepping that direction are seeing that it's really shallow, ourselves included. And guess what? You know, Ray Mouse is a fan. You well, know, see, let, let, me, let me say this real quick. If you're familiar with our channel, all of us sat here, we criticized Nintendo. We definitely criticized Sony. And Microsoft is not exempt from any criticism either. Mm-hmm. So if you think that we're sitting here, you know, harping on Microsoft, check the other videos that we have. We, we have tore Nintendo apart. We have tore Sony apart. So, unfortunately, you know, I don't like doing this. You don't like doing it. But, look, Microsoft, you have got to do better. And I, have, I agree 100% with what Reverend said. Right now, your pool is about as deep as a puddle on the ground right now. There's nothing there to entice people to go out 
and buy your system. I'll say it before and I'll say it again. I don't play video game systems. I play video games. You know, I'm a gamer first. A fanboy is a very, very kilometer distant second somewhere. He did kilometer, not mile. <laughs> it's, it's way out there. I, I just, look, yes, I like certain genres, but fuck, I'm not going to be a closed-minded gamer or yeah. systems and or games. I'm just not. But in order for me to be interested in the Xbox One and or Scorpio, it has to have a lot of freaking first party content on it. That you can't find anywhere that else. That you can't get anywhere else. Not on PC, not on a Microsoft Portable if they ever make one, not on Sony, not on Nintendo, none of that. It's got to be on their console. It's got to be there. Yep. And that's that's what's going to convince you, just like myself and just like Gray Mouse, just like actually most mass consumers out there, that's what's going to convince people to actually go out of the way to buy what you're offering them, you know? Um, and yeah, that's, I think that pretty much wraps up, uh, what we're, what we're trying to say. You know, it's been kind of a disappointing week with Microsoft with, the the cancellation of scale bound, not just the cancellation of scale bound, but how they reacted to it and how they addressed it was definitely a letdown to a lot of people. Um, cause yeah, I don't know whether or not it's because they're, they're, they're dealing with legal, legal things or, or, or other marketing or, or, or contractual obligations because of how things went down. Maybe they aren't able to address it in another light, but yeah, that was, that was definitely not very good. And, Considering that we're looking into this new year, 2017, and we're looking at what Microsoft has to offer us on an exclusive level is woefully, woefully, you know, shallow. Um, it's one of those things that we can't ignore. We would like to know your thoughts and comments on this. Is there something we're missing or are we, I don't know, are we crying wolf over this? None of us are saying that Microsoft is going to lose their place in number two, at least not at least for the next few years, but, but you know, granted, taking a look at the at the forecast, there isn't a lot to look forward to. Even the most staunch of Xbox supporters, if they look at the look at what's been announced, what's been confirmed, they have to come to that sort of realization. Well, um, let me add something. I'm sorry, I don't want to make this video longer than it already is, but um, one thing that I want to make perfectly clear is this: is that we're looking at the Xbox One exclusive going forward, going forward from 2007 or 2017, 2018. There, there are some Xbox exclusives in 16, 15, 14. They're there. We acknowledge that they're there, but what we're talking about is like new owners, people that don't own the system. Um, I guess you could include older games in, in an exclusive list, but most people are when they buy a system, they look at the future of that system, not what was released in the past. I mean, because and since 2017 is so lackluster in first-person exclusives so far, so far up until you know this is January 14th, 2017. January 15th. January 15th. I'm sorry, and so we're a couple months away from E3, so we have no idea what Microsoft is going to going to announce so what backwards compatibility from the xbox original they were actually talking about that while you're bullshitting seriously yeah, that was that was something that they were that spencer was talking that's, about that's why i brought it up but the thing is is this is that we're looking at it toward and also it, is that the way to get crimson skies on there if yeah if oh my god that's terrible that's so funny it's terrible but but <laughs> You messed me up. My whole train of thoughts gone. That that's a damn shame. I mean, if if you put the Nintendo Switch now and your PlayStation Four and the Xbox One, and you're looking at games in the forward, I'm more interested in getting the Switch than the Scorpio. Yeah, and that that's, really kind of yeah. That makes the point right there. So, so that's what, I, and that that wasn't even a major. Well, it was a major conference, but it's not a like a annual conference is whenever Nintendo wants to do a direct. But the thing is, what I was saying was, is that we're criticizing Microsoft's future games and future endeavors. And it's, it's crap. I mean, this is coming from a guy who owns an Xbox one. It's yeah. shit. 
No, I, I don't. I would say that a shitter is crap because the thing is, is that something has something stinking, stinky and and voluminous and tactical tactile has to be there in order for it to be shit. There's just nothing there right now, and that's that's the thing. All right, you're right. It doesn't qualify to be. You're right. You can't shit something out that you haven't ate. Yeah, yeah. It is what you're saying. That's pretty much what, what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you know, and that's that's really where we're at. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna leave it at that. You know, if you're so kind, like say at the end of every video, uh, leave us a comment below, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, we are the middle aged guys, and we've been bullshitting about the cancellation of Scalebound and the outlook of Microsoft exclusives, especially heading into 2017. Unfortunately, spoilers, everybody, it's not a lot. I am the Reverend. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Cray Mouse One. Once again, for the benefits of common sense, and logic, and lack of fucking games, lack of gaming, canceling games, canceling exclusives. Stop that, please. I want to be interested in order to get this fucking console so I can fucking. So look what you just said. You want to be interested in, yes. in, in please. <laughs> I own an Xbox original. I own a 360 because the interest was there. The first party was there. The third party was there. So, damn it, Xbox One. What the fuck are you doing? Snap out of that shit. Xbox One, one exclusive per year. <laughs> I'm going to end this right now. <laughs> Credits. Just, yeah. Oh, God.